Hi, I'm Donna Reish of Raising Kids with Character and Character Inc. Press Publishing, as well as Plexus to Feel Great, Plexus Supplements. Today, I would like to talk to you about avoiding the terrible twos. If you have heard us speak very much or read much of the blog or been to many of our homeschooling workshops or our parenting seminar, you know that preschool is magical to me. The ages, especially between four and six, are absolutely wonderful. But the way you get to those wonderful, magical years of four to six is what I'm going to talk about today. And that is that of avoiding the terrible twos. We never called them terrible twos. We always called them terrific twos. Um, and we called them thrilling threes and fabulous fours because we always wanted to be positive with our children who are now almost 18 to 33, seven kids. We're graduating our last child from homeschooling this month. But I have a lot to say about toddlers right now because I have a toddler grandbaby, a little grandson who is just like 25 months old, uh, 27 months old. And so um, everything that I've ever believed about toddlers and everything I've ever taught about toddlers is all coming back to me all the time. So today I would like to talk to you about five tips um, for avoiding the terrible twos. And the first tip uh, actually starts out before the two-year-old mark, and that is discerning the difference between wants and needs. If you've heard us talk about um, parenting paradigms and also about, uh, which is what you believe about parenting, and also about that age range between eight months or even sometimes six months with really um, cognitively developed children, but eight, 10 months um, up to um, 18 months when you're trying to discern, you know, what the child needs versus what the child wants. And you're trying to determine, uh, you know, how do I say no to this when it seems like a, a bona fide need? That is the period of time that I'm talking about here. So the terrible twos or the terrific twos actually begin many months before the child turns two. That period of, of blissfulness that you can have during the two-year-old stage begins when your child is eight months old or nine months old and you are realizing, you know what? He's screaming because he wants something, not because he needs something. When a baby is first born, we believe wholeheartedly that the wants and needs are the same. Newborn babies just came out of the womb and they have many, many needs. And when they need to eat frequently or they need changed frequently or they need held frequently, those are all the same, one and the same. But uh, we also believe that there's a period of time during babyhood, probably around three or four months, um, when those needs and wants start to diverge. And most people don't want to believe this, and so they continue treating the needs and the wants the same. And I can see that in a three or four month old. But then what happens is a child becomes six months, seven months, eight months. And you have things like he won't sit in his high chair. He won't ride in the car seat without screaming. He won't stay in his bed. He won't take a nap. He won't sit in his bouncy seat. And at that point, you have uh, continued beyond the infancy days of making the wants and needs the same. And so this is actually where the terrible twos start, especially if you're continuing this into eight months, 10 months, 12 months, 14 months, and you find yourself unable to say no to your toddler, either because you consider that toddler still to be an infant or because you don't really know the difference between wants and needs in your toddler, or um, because you have bought into some kind of parenting philosophy that has taught you to continue to give in all the time and then later on try to correct it, later on try to make it better. And this is how you end up with what many people call a terrible two. And so my first piece of advice is to discern the difference between wants and needs, starting way earlier than the two-year-old mark. And so this begins with training the eight-month-old uh, to sit in a seat, to sit on your lap during church or during a meeting, to sit in a bouncy seat or a stroller, a high chair during meals, 
car seat when you're driving down the road, and so forth. Now, some of this might sound hard, especially if you have a 16-month-old who will not do anything. But there are two ways that you can determine what your toddler, prior to toddlerhood, can do. The first way is that most people really are strict about car seats. And so if you are strict about car seats from the beginning and your infant is always hooked into a car seat properly and always stays there during the entire ride, then you have just told, and you've been able to accomplish this, and now he's three months, six months, eight months, we're looking down the road, maybe we're really talking more about eight to, to eight months and up here, but now you're looking at that age range, and guess what? You can say, my child can sit in a car seat, so he can also sit in a high chair. Basically, you should award yourself an award because you've made it. You have proven to yourself that you can parent a baby slash toddler, that you can say, this is what we're going to do, this is for your safety, and this is how our family is going to live. The same thing is true with anything else you want that baby or toddler to do. So anything you want that baby or toddler to do, you can go back to the fact that you have accomplished that goal of sitting in a car seat. And anything else you want, you can also make happen in the exact same way that you did the car seat. Whether you want the child to start sleeping in a crib, you want the child to sit up in a high chair during meals, you want the child to sit on your lap during a meeting or church, whatever you want, if you have won the car seat battle, you can win any battle, right? Because you're the parent and you've already shown yourself that you can do it. The second way to know that you can do whatever it takes to start training your older toddler, your older baby, your toddler, in obedience and these other things to avoid the terrible twos, is if your little child can come up to you and give you a high five. We call this the high five test in our parenting seminars and workshops. That is that if your child comes up to you and you say, give me five, and he gives you five, then guess what? He can come when you call him. He can stop when you say no. He can quit screaming when you say quit screaming. He can sit still when you put on his shoe because he passed the high five test. So those two benchmarks, you pass the parenting test of putting him in the car seat, and he passes the high five test, at eight months, 10 months, then you have got the two things you need to know to toddler, to parent your toddler. Number one, you've got the capability because you passed the car seat test. Number two, you've got the cognitive ability, the comprehension, the understanding in that child to be able to start to learn to obey because he passed the high five test. So the first thing to avoid the terrible twos is to start earlier. Obviously, if you're in the middle of the twos and you haven't done any of that, then that's a little more difficult. And uh, we actually have a section of our Raising Kids with Character Parenting Seminar that we are breaking out called Raising Littles with Character. And it can be a four hour one evening or four hour one Saturday morning workshop, or we could do it throughout a homeschool convention or we can do it for a small group or a homeschool support group or a Sunday school class. It doesn't, it's not, none of our parenting seminars are homeschool specific. And we would love to come and help you with that if you find yourself in that situation. All right, the second way that you can avoid the terrible twos is to mean what you say. We have a meme floating around the internet that says, don't say no unless you'll go. What this means is that you should never, ever use the word no with your toddler if you will not go to him if he doesn't obey it. Don't say no unless you'll go. So if you're sitting in a chair and he's over playing with something that he's not supposed to play with, but it's not life-threatening, don't say, don't play with that, stop doing that, put that down, no, no, no unless you are actually going to get up from your seat, go over and take it from him and either punish him or hold him on your lap or put him in his crib or do something that shows that you meant no. So don't ever say no unless you'll go. Every time you say no and you don't go, you are saying that your no doesn't matter at all and it makes no difference. One of the best ways to encourage 
the terrible twos is to say all kinds of things all the time but never mean them or you mean them part of the time and so if you think in your mind don't say no unless I'll go don't say no unless I'll go that will help you not to say no stop don't put that down unless you're willing to get up and go if you're not willing to get up and go then it's not that important don't say no don't say it at all. Just let him play with something that he's not supposed to play with. Let him get into something he's not allowed to get into. But don't say no and then not go. Thirdly, don't sweat the small stuff. We have a tendency to put every type of behavior on the same level. If you've been to our Raising Kids with Character Parenting Seminar, you know that we de delineate character-based or routine behaviors like sloppiness or loudness or not putting away your toys or uh, not cleaning your room or not finishing your homework. Routine character behaviors are in one column and heart behaviors, the four D's, deceit, dishonesty, destruction, and disobedience, purposeful destruction, those are in another column. And we encourage parents of older kids to separate those behaviors out because it's not the same. Leaving the pajamas on the floor is not the same as telling a lie. Well, we can even start doing that with toddlers. And I encourage you to start doing it with your two-year-old. So with that, we would say that all behaviors are not equal. Don't sweat the small stuff. And so if he is getting some things out and you don't want him to, how big of a deal do you want that to be made? How big of a deal do you want to make out of that? How much do you want to put into that? Is that the same as not coming when you call him? Is that the same as saying no when you tell him to do something? Is that the same as throwing something in anger? Is that the same as screaming if he doesn't get his own way? No. Those behaviors that are just small don't matter. Does he have to stand right here with his hands at his sides? Or can he stand over by the Hamburglar at McDonald's? And can he touch it? Is it that big of a deal? Major on the majors and don't sweat the small stuff. If you combine this with don't say no unless you'll go, you'll be doing a lot better in your parenting. Next, of course, is that one that nobody likes to talk about, that you hear all the time it's so cliched, but it's absolutely positively crucial and that is consistency. With toddlers, more than anything, they need consistency. They need to go to bed with a certain routine and at a certain point in that routine. It doesn't always have to be the exact same time, just the same way. They have to get up the same way. Either they're allowed up on their own or they're not. Either they're in a crib and they stay till you come or they're, they climb out or they're in a big bed and they stay till you come and you, they call for you and you tell them they can get up. Whatever those things are, naps, either they always take a nap or you chase them around and you beg and you hope that they will obey and you ask and you want them to take a nap, but they don't. And either they sit up at the table and they eat the food you put on their plate or they don't. Small amounts of food, a variety, this is what you're eating. Okay, you didn't eat it, we'll put it back for later. Get that out at snack time, nothing in between. That consistency, those consistencies will make all the difference in the world in your toddler becoming a terrible two or a terrific two. And finally, I have to say, tell, don't ask. There's a lot of parenting advice out there right now that says, you know, to be gentle. And I'm not against being gentle. Oh, I was so gentle with my babies and toddlers and all of my children. We talked to them. We spoke to their hearts. We loved them, but we disciplined them and we trained them properly. But all the while we were gaining their trust and gaining their hearts because they knew how much we loved them and they knew how much we were investing in them. But when you buy into this asking approach to parenting, then you are telling your kids that they can obey or not obey. You can ask anytime you want, but if you are going to become an asking parent, you also have to become a, okay, it's fine if you don't obey parent. Don't ask your kids to, to do something and then punish them. Don't ask your kids to do something and then demand that they obey. You either tell them what you want them to do and then follow through with it, or you ask and then you say it's okay if they didn't. More later.
Thanks.